Oh, hey, what's happening there, YouTube? It's Brian House here for Housemade, and today we're gonna do something you may not have thought of. This is like one of probably a thousand reasons why I think everyone should have a 2x72 belt grinder in their workshop. We're actually going to be sharpening drill bits with it today, and, and I did show a video a while back about using my drill doctor. I still use my drill doctor. I love that thing, but uh, when you're in the middle of drilling something or you need a drill bit sharpened really quickly and your 2x72 belt grinder is sitting three feet away from you, it's a really tempting idea to just go over and try to use it. Now, I have seen a bunch of people sharpen drill bits with a bench grinder. That's a very common way of doing it. Um, obviously, the drill doctor is another great way to do it as well. But you will be surprised at how quickly and how easily the 2x72 adapts to this task. So, uh, hey, why don't we just go ahead and get started? All right, so here's my setup. This is uh, my Revolution 2x72 belt grinder. If you're new to my channel, uh, this belt grinder was something that I prototyped a few years ago right here on YouTube. And we ultimately designed it, we prototyped it, and led it to manufacture right here on YouTube. And in fact, this is all I do now is actually sell kits and plans for this Revolution 2x72. So if you're interested in that, go out to my website, housemade.us and check out the project. About uh, maybe a year ago or a year and a half ago, I made a video on creating a soft platen for your 2x72 belt grinder. Now, you don't create this just for sharpening drill bits. This is actually for other things too. In fact, I use it to remove like say faceting on flat grinds and there's a ton of reasons why I think every person that makes knives or even does metal work should have a soft platen for their 2x72. So go out and check out that video. I'll put a link down in the description so you can go find that video about making one of these. But essentially the short of it is it's a standard platen with like an aluminum backer and then on top of that is a piece of leather and a piece of like used Scotch-Brite or just something soft. There's a whole bunch of creative po folks out there that have actually made their own soft platens using all kinds of different types of things so you can you can basically what you're trying to do is remove the hardness from the actual uh, platen itself and the reason why i think this is important is because when you're sharpening a drill bit it's a curved surface right so you there's not a lot of room for error so the harder the backer the the tougher it's going to be to achieve that rounded sort of sharp edge and with the soft platen backer, it just seems to really work. It's like almost instantaneous. You can achieve a really sharp bevel. So uh, if you're like me, you probably got a bag of dull drill bits laying around and, a, you know, just kind of sitting around everywhere because the minute they get dull, you just kind of toss them aside. Uh, here's a, a piece of advice for you. So if you decide you want to take this endeavor on, you want to learn how to do this, I would grab your cheap Harbor Freight, you know, Northern Tool, whatever they are. Uh, you know, you get those $10 deals at, at your local tool sh store and use those as your uh, first sort of round. And the bigger the drill bit, the better. So, you know, grab the half inch drill bit, you know, because you're going to actually be able to see what you're doing. Once you start uh, sharpening like the bigger bits, the half inch, the three quarters and all of that, then start moving your way down, you know, five sixteenths, three eighths, and all that, all the way down to eighth inch, whatever you want. The small, small guys, probably not worth sharpening, you know, toss those and just replace them. But uh, yeah, start big and then go down the chain. So uh, soft backer on my two by 72, this is the first step. So if you don't have one of those, you're gonna wanna make one. And again, it's not just for sharpening drill bits. You're gonna get a ton of use out of this guy. So just remember that. And uh, yeah, let's, uh, let's dial in the, the, the grinder itself and then I'll show you how I do this. One other thing I really like having is uh, this, one of these gooseneck uh, lights. Um, I'll put a link down in the description to Amazon. That's where I get these. They're magnetic, right? So you can just stick them wherever you want. Uh, but yeah, uh, a magnetic light that's lighting up your, your, your work surface, super super awesome addition to any grinder, any 2x72. So in the uh, interest of uh, kind of showing you the demo, this is a three quarter inch uh, drill bit and it's in okay shape. I sharpen these on the regular, but this one's been chipped up a little bit and it's definitely dull. It's hard to see in this uh, with this video, but this is definitely dull. Like I use these to drill out uh, laser cut parts and deburr things. So this thing gets beat up on the regular 
And that's actually what kind of spawned the idea for this video was that I was deburring parts for the revolution kits and these bits kept going dull on me. So quick and easy way, I figured it out and then I started using it more and more and realized this is such a useful tool. I have to share this with the YouTube community. All right, so three quarter inch drill bit. On the belt itself, I'm using a worn out 100 grit ceramic belt, okay? Just a worn out, doesn't have to be anything uh, fancy. You could even use silicon carbide if you have it. Uh, but yeah, about 100 grit is, is about right. And the reason why I choose 100 grit is because you want it to remove material, but you want it to remove material at a slower, middle to slow pace without heating up the steel okay so just like in anything anything you're working on if it's hardened steel like this is a cobalt drill bit it's hardened steel if i heat this up i'm going to ruin the temper and then you're not going to get a whole lot of use out of it after after that anyway unless you reheat treat it so i don't want to have to do that either so the key to this is sharpening this thing at a pace in which you're not going to remove uh, the temper from the actual piece. The cutting edge is this edge right here. So this is really all we need to be nice and sharp and clean. And then also in my case, there's a little bit of an edge like right here that we're going to try to sharpen as well. Everything behind it is kind of just there to glide along the cuts. Okay. So you really want to get this edge sharp. So the drill bit is turning like this. And as you can see, you got two, cutting edges as it's spinning. So it's just digging into the steel as it goes down. So what you're trying to achieve is you're trying to match the already pre-existing angle of the drill bit itself. And you're trying to give this a nice sharp uh, bite right here, a nice sharp edge. And it's just like a knife, if you can imagine. You want a sharp knife, you gotta have a nice bevel on the edge there. But in this case, because it's curved, you're just gonna match it. So as we drag this across the belt, you're going to see that I'm taking this edge and just kind of shaping it down and making it nice and sharp. Okay, so uh, the best way to shoot this is just straight down so you can kind of see the uh, angle that needs to be achieved while doing this. This is where the soft platen really shines, and it's because, uh, you know, we're going to be pushing up against this platen and turning this um, clockwise to kind of just get it uh, down against this belt and we're going to try to match this bevel right here all right it's not the end of the world if you don't do this correctly because it can be uh, corrected while you're while you're working on these things so don't don't uh, be too nervous about it and remember you're working with a dull drill bit anyway so you know if you screw it up you know it's not the end of the world and and you're going to have a little bit of time to actually uh you know get it fixed also there is this other cutting edge right here this little bevel right here we're going to go ahead and clean that up as well one other tip is going to be to have a cup of water near you so that you can dip as you're doing this you really want to keep this steel cool while you're working and that way you don't ruin your temper so hey let's give it a shot I'm just running at 25 percent on this okay how I roll over it just like that Okay, so we did the three quarter drill bit and I just want to go down to a half inch, right? This one is really beat up. These are the titanium coated drill bits from Harbor Freight. I get that question a lot about sharpening your own drill bits. It's like, well, you're rubbing off the titanium coating. Uh, is that okay to do and all of that? Um, well, I don't really know the answer to that. All I know is that after I sharpen this, I get a lot more use out of these. So, you know, my take on it is, you know, 
uh, the coating probably doesn't do a whole lot. Maybe I'm wrong. If I am wrong, let me know down in the comments, but um, I'm not really sure. I buy a whole set of these, which I think is like 20 drill bits for $10 or $10.99 over at Harbor Freight. And so, you know, I'm not really looking for a whole lot of quality out of that, actually. I'm just, uh, you know, hoping to get some uses out of them. But doing this process actually makes them go a lot further. So anyway, let's go ahead and uh, sharpen this guy. All right. Looking pretty good. You can also see the consistency of the light as it falls over the edge. If you've got a lot of faceting on there, that's something you may want to try to correct. You can kind of just look to see, you know, how the light falls over those curves. And again, that's the reason why I like the soft platen because those curves, they just kind of fall into line. Okay, one last thing I need to put a sharper edge on is this deburring tool. Um, I just wanted to show you that you literally can sharpen anything on this. Now, I wouldn't sharpen chisels or anything like that with these because the softness is going to round over the chisel you're really going to want a hard backer for that but stuff like this that has got like a round edge to it it's perfect so let's go ahead and clean these edges up and uh, we'll have like a brand new deburring tool this one was an interesting one to sharpen because of how many edges there were and it was also really like concave on sort of halfway up those bevels so i had to really rework those edges but it came out really nice look at that that just took me about three minutes once you start getting the the feeling of how this this works uh, it becomes kind of a relaxing process to put edges back on things like this okay so uh in the interest of science we have to know if this drill bit actually does work so uh let's go ahead and uh, chuck it up and drill through a piece of scrap, quarter inch wall, mild steel, no pilot hole, and we'll use some cutting oil and we'll see if it uh, goes through. All right, so let's give the half inch bit a try. This half inch bit is beat. But now we have a surface where we can test this uh, deburring tool. my favorite I'm still a big fan of these single fluted guys they do a much cleaner job but these are nice for like softer things like wood and things let's, let's take a look at the difference ah yes beauty Single fluted for the win. One last little piece of advice, if you've got aging eyes like I do, one of these little inexpensive, I don't know, these are like a jeweler's loop 
headband thing. I don't know what they call it. I'll put a link down in the description so you can find them. I think they're under 20 bucks. These are fantastic. They've got a little built-in light at the top and a couple different uh, powers that you can add and you don't have to take your safety glasses off while you're working with them. This makes all the uh, you know fine-tuning adjustments on stuff like this a little bit easier to do. Well, the older you get anyway. So there's a few takeaways uh, that you need to make sure you kind of put in your pocket uh, after you watch this video is make sure you get your right angles. That's really super important. So if you screw up those bevels, you know, you're going to want to kind of adjust those angles and get them back straight. And then just take your time. You know, you're not doing rocket science right here. I got this on my first uh, or second try. And if I can do it, so can you. So just remember that you're in the ever so constant flux state of learning. And that's what I love about being in my workshop. Now, if you're like me and you're an introvert and you're just kind of hanging out by yourself in your workshop, podcasts are an excellent way to keep you company while you're doing this work. And there's a few of them. I'm going to list them right here, uh, right over here. Just, just go ahead and go down. And down in the description, I'm going to put links to all of them so you can go check them out. These are the ones that I really listen to on a daily basis. If they put out content, I listen to it. And it's super important that I stay a, a part of this uh, maker community. And that's how I do it. Now, if you're not listening to my podcast, the Work For It podcast, you should. It's myself, Ben Butler, and Brian Cohn of B. Cohn Knives, and we talk business in the workshop, and that's every single Thursday that, that is released. So you can go check us out there. So there's many ways to support my channel, listening to the Work For It podcast, liking this video, subscribing, commenting, all of those things is fantastic. There's Patreon, there's Buy Me A Coffee, but by far the best way to support me and my work is to go to my website, housemade.us, buy pieces, parts, and plans, the Revolution 2x72 belt grinder project, that is the best way to support the work that I do right here in my workshop. I hope you guys are doing well out there and I truly appreciate your support. I hope you know that. Make sure you go out and find me in all three major social media platforms, YouTube, Facebook, and Instagram. Follow me there as well. And you know what? You can keep up with me on a daily basis. I would truly appreciate that, guys. Listen, I hope to see you on the next video. My name is Brian House and this has been Housemade.